Hi, and welcome to IEA Academy Virtual Open House. Thank you so much for joining us here today. My name is Amber McLaren. I am the Enrollment Coordinator for the Institute for Educational Advancement, and I'm going to be moderating our experience here today. Hold on with me just a moment as we get started. I want to take just a little bit of time to orient you to Zoom. I'm sure you've all had a lot of experience with this in the last couple of weeks and months, but just to give you an idea of how our session today will work, we are going to be asking for Q&As, so questions and answers, which you can do through the Q&A section in the, the bar below. You can answer in your, or enter in your questions and hit send. We also have the chat feature enabled. For the chat feature, if you have any technical questions that come up or if you wanna ask us questions um, that maybe aren't relevant for everybody or if you wanna talk to other parents, this is an excellent place to do that in. Please feel free to use that feature. And if you notice down on the bottom, you can toggle between who you're speaking to. So just to know those are some options available to you. Again, today is a Q&A. Please feel free to enter in any questions you have. We'll answer them in the course of this orientation, um, or we'll have somebody who is monitoring both the chat and the Q&A answer your questions. So please feel free to ask those questions and we'll get to them uh, throughout this presentation. Another feature we're gonna be utilizing today is our poll feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a moment for our first poll to come up. Excellent. So on this poll, go ahead and take a moment to answer both of these. And I see people are familiar with our academy program. That's great since this is academy. Looks like we've got some new people to us as well. Really excited to see that. And then it looks like people are familiar with our Carolyn D. Bradley Scholarship, which is for seventh graders, and then a, a bunch of people that are new to IEA, so welcome. I'm gonna end this poll in about another 10 seconds. All right, excellent. So that is how the polls work. We'll be doing a poll again in just a little bit. So let's see, there's some results. Thank you all for sharing so much. And it looks like we have a lot of new people, welcome. So to give you some context about uh, IEA, the Institute for Educational Advancement, we're a nonprofit located in Pasadena. We have been part of the community for over 20 years, and we predominantly serve um, students and family members of gifted and highly talented individuals. We have programs that we run. Academy is one of those programs. The Carolyn D. Bradley Scholarship is another one of those programs, as well as a program called Labs, Explore. We have a new option that's virtual online called Spyglass that you'll be learning more about through our newsletters and other mailings. And we have a lot of other content that we provide. Another area that, that IEA um, contributes to the community through is through service. We have a gifted support group. We've got an event tomorrow evening. So if you're interested in that, you can look at our website and sign up for that. That's a completely free uh, meeting where people talk about what's going on with their lives and their students and hopefully come together as a community and share knowledge knowledge. IEA is really a, a national presence, but is in Pasadena. So we focused on local programming and are currently moving into the digital space, uh, given the current situation. And that's what we're here to discuss today with Academy. All right, let's go ahead and do the second poll. The second poll is to give us a sense of who you are, the community out there, and, and what you're interested in learning from us today. Go ahead and take a moment to fill out that questionnaire. I'll give you another 10 seconds here before I close the polling. Great, thank you so much for answering those questions. Let's look, take a look and see what we've got. 
All right. So it looks like we've got a, a couple of students from six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, a lot of 13 year olds. Wow, look at that. Excellent. Thank you so much. And let's look at the second question we asked. Do you live close enough to our learning center in Pasadena? Some are local, some are too far, and many live outside of the LA area. Okay, which is makes sense since we're here for the digital portion today. This map sort of gives a representation of where you guys are coming to us from. If you remember in the registration, you gave us your zip code. So we're just taking a look at where our community is today. Thank you so much for joining us from across the country. So to start, we are Academy. Academy is a program that is offered for students from six years old up to 14 years old. And I'd like to take a moment and introduce you to our team. There is a group of us. Um, they're going to go ahead and join me with video and audio here in just a minute. <clears throat> Hi, Nicole. Hi, Alexis. Hello, Megan. So, Alexis Hopper, go ahead and take a moment to introduce yourself. Hi, hey, everyone. Um, I am really excited to be here with you. Um, my name is Alexis and I'm a program coordinator for Academy. I've been working with students, families, teachers, staff, our community of constituents um, for a few years now, have really, really enjoyed um, sort of the development, the evolution of this program um, as, and, as well as the Institute and really look forward to sharing with you the details of our online um, courses this summer, uh, which we're very excited to launch and share more about. So looking forward to learning more about you um, and sharing what we have to offer. And I'm Nicole Endicott. This will actually be my fifth uh, IEA summer. I've been here as a teacher. I've been a program assistant, program coordinator, but this will be my very first time heading up something virtual. So this is a first, which is fun, um, after five years. And I'm a program coordinator. And I'm Megan Figueroa. I'm newer to IEA, and so this will be my first summer. Um, it's obviously a very different summer than what I hear we typically um, are offering. So I'm excited, though, to get to know our community better and also really excited about the opportunity to get to know our community at a greater scale um, across the country and be able to serve kids and gifted students from all over the states. So welcome to our orientation and welcome to IAA. Excellent. And again, my name is Amber McLaren. I am the enrollment coordinator for IEA. This will be my second summer witnessing academy classes. The virtual is new, so I'm excited to see what we can do given the new space. And then I also want to introduce, e introduce Anvi. Um, those of you who are familiar with our Pasadena location, she's typically at the front desk. She's still with us, although she is currently in our parent section in the chat. So shout out to Anvi. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Excellent. Thank you for joining guys. Nicole, I'll let you take over the, the website orientation. All right, so I'm going to share my screen and show you just briefly uh, how to find your way around our website because uh, we have a lot of things happening. And uh, this isn't where we'll address the main content of Academy, but we will get to that in just a moment. So first of all, from our front page, you can see all the things we have going on. And if you hover over programs, and click on Academy, that brings you, brings us to our main Academy page. And then uh, if you scroll down, you can see, uh, you can read about our online summer program, including the dates. You can see our application deadline is May 27th, which is coming up pretty quickly. And this is about our, the open house that we're in right now. And then here is our schedule. So if you click on classes, that shows you the course description. You can skip through this way or you can click out and click on different classes. If there are any prerequisites, those will be list listed here. Uh, and for our Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes, the times are listed here at the bottom. So on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, our classes are 50 minutes and then Tuesday, Thursday, since they're just two days a week, that those are 75 minutes. If you keep scrolling down, you can see information about tuition, discounts, financial aid, and charter schools that we work with. And then back at the top here, if you click how to apply, this, is, this will take you 
to all the information you need to know to actually become enrolled in the program. We're not going to be walking through the application at all today, uh, but I will show you where you can find information about that. Uh, there is information for if you're brand new, which many of you are, for if you're returning. And these are the buttons that will bring you where you need to go. So if you're starting an application for the first time, you'll click here. If you're going back into the community portal, either to continue your application or to make a payment or make an enrollment, you'll click here. And then if you're having any trouble with the application process, and you can click here on IEA Community Portal Tutorials. These are new. And these are videos for each section of the application process. And we'll walk you through anything that's tricky or anything that um, any questions we anticipate along the way. So if you're just wanting to get to know um, the community portal generally, or if you're looking to actually apply for Academy, update your medical information, or the final step, which is enrolling in classes. And that is how you'll complete your Academy enrollment and you actually become enrolled in a course. Uh, now I'm going to pass it off to Alexis, though, to actually talk about what these classes are and why they're so great. Thank you, Nicole. Um, it is really fun to explore the website. I'm sure you may dive into other um, programs, other areas, but what you'll find is really that the mission is, is consistent um, throughout programs and we're so excited to, um, to offer exactly what your child needs and we're here to work toward finding out what that is, um, whether they're six or 11 or 13. Um, so over the next six slides, um, what I'll be doing is walking through why Academy is so unique, why we love to be here, build classes, new classes every session. Um, I'll be introducing you to our students, sort of the, the population of students that we work with, um, our teachers, some about the curriculum, as well as what the online format will be, um, and a little bit of student work, which for me is the very best place to start um, from in describing what the spirit of the classes are, what the students get out of them. Um, just a very brief little um, note, this spring was the first session that we introduced online courses, and we have had such great, um, you know, such great experience from those and look forward to really honing in on what works for students. It really comes down to the individual student. So we're here for advisement, um, really trying to make sure that your child gets the high level content that they're working, um, they're, they're interested in. We find that that drive toward the topic and the content is what um, is at the heart of the program and the instructors that are able to deliver it, to communicate it, to bring it to life. Um, we're excited that we can offer small class sizes um, as well as just a real collaboration between students and teachers to um, engage and interact in, in a multitude of ways. Um, and so really as we talk through um, sort of the general um, scope of curriculum for Academy, what you'll find is that it is very, very unique to the course content, to the instructor and to the students who are enrolling thus the application and sort of the portfolio um, style of that application is really to help us best know from the start how we can um, you know, find the right, the optimal match for your child. Um, and again, throughout this um, online platform, what we're doing with our classes, we very much want to make sure that we keep that community aspect. Um, our students, our families are, are um, really they they we can give them what they need by connecting them so um, really wanting to make sure that we're, that's not lost in our online content um, so what I'd like to do is um, just very very briefly before we go to the next slide is just briefly um, talk a little bit about the enrollment process um, as we go through the classes as you look at the website and you have questions as to how many classes should my child take um, should they be um, working with different instructors through the day. Um, those types of, of questions um, is something that um, the, the enrollment process is built for. So what we do is we um, do a lot of, of communication with families to find out what they need, whether it's information on if there's prerequisites, 
Um, we work with families on if their child really is going to work best in um, with, with peers that are same age or maybe they are flexible and are happy to work with a young student population. We have classes that span ages. Um, we want to encourage that cross age interaction, um, which is so exciting um, when it comes together. But we also are very much um, in the business of making sure that the class is the right fit for the child. So um, the enrollment process, you would, um, once your application is received and accepted, then we look at what courses you're most interested in and um, work towards just that confirmation of placement. Um, so that's a little bit about the application, the enrollment, the advisement. And so now what I'd like to do is um, just go to our students and who they are. So um, I think Amber is helping out with our slide progression. Um, and so here, a lot of the questions, one of the key questions that we get from families that are new to Academy, um, and even some of our teachers, this might be news to them when we um, are doing some demographic data, we actually are really successful with serving um, all populations. And we work hard to do that through our um, length of program, through the offerings, um, how long they are, where, we, where our outreach is. Um, so we're thrilled that we're able to provide the classes for all students. Um, and so one way that we do that is through um, length of program. So during the academic year, we have a semester system. Um, so far, it has mostly been in person. Um, we're excited for the potential of the online learning. Um, but those um, academic, the semester system is Monday through Friday after school as well as Saturdays all day, well, 10 to 3.30. And then we also have Wednesdays and Fridays at this time are built out for some morning classes as well. So we do not have any one specific um, type of curriculum for any one specific learning path. Um, it is really open um, and um, really content driven again. Um, so we are um, an enrichment program. We're accredited as an enrichment program. Um, we also, in addition to offering these classes Monday through Saturday after school, as well as daytime classes, we are in um, public schools here in Pasadena. We are so um, excited and happy to have the opportunity to work with public schools here um, and their students um, on site at those um, elementary schools, hopefully um, expanding that opportunity. Um, in addition, another way that we reach out to the broad community um, is through um, financial assistance, making sure that all students have opportunity. Um, we also um, work with charter schools. So if there's a family that's working, um, doing either hybrid or homeschool, we do work with charter schools to figure out how to um, coordinate their um, you know, tuition that they would provide. But again, we're very clear that we're um, an enrichment program, but we are very much a deep dive into that enrichment. Um, so I'd like to then now move on to speaking a little bit more about um, the teachers. So if we can um, move forward to our next slide. Um, they make me smile. I'm so excited to introduce you to them. So our returning uh, families that are here joining us, um, you might recognize some of these faces. They are all so committed, excited, interested, and experienced, and have such unique um, skill sets to be working with different populations. This set of, of teachers, um, they are, they're not exclusively with certain age groups, but these um, teachers that appear here um, are kind of on the six to nine, six to 11, 12 um, year old um, classes that we have. So Summer Eves, Tessa, Lucy, Maria, Toby, and Cynthia. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about their classes and what they're offering. Um, on the website, we, we have um, teacher bios. Um, if you don't know exactly which class is taught by which teacher, we can certainly fill in that information um, for you. But um, let me just look here. I want, you know, also for our teachers, we, our curriculum is coming from them. Um, as well as through NAGC um, award-winning curriculum that we purchase and find ways to um, sort of bridge to a teacher style to make sure that that curriculum is 
um, true to um, the gifted population. Um, Summer Eves here on the left, she has worked with us to create classes like California's Awesome Nature, um, the Smarty Science. Uh, she is a real uh, intuitive, hands-on instructor and is excited to be able to translate that into her live online courses. Um, Tessa Lamb has great success with getting those young ones writing, um, really great with um, you know, the creative arts, and she's also doing the scientific explorations. I'm not gonna go over too much of every individual teacher, but I do just wanna say that um, each one is just fabulous. Um, Toby is doing the Harry Potter class, which you'll see a little bit of, of um, information on later, both in student work and through our platform demo, um, but just very excited to introduce you to these teachers. Uh, let's, we can continue to our next slide. Um, this is our next batch of instructors. Um, I was thrilled to get this one of Richard in his astro suit um, to share with you. Um, Richard does an amazing job with doing getting children involved in the hands-on electronics. He did a wonderful job translating that to the online platform this um, spring. Um, we get big thanks from the students at the end of the session. Uh, they are just really grateful for what teachers bring um, to the classroom. Um, Joan and Rich are here. Um, they bring some real accelerated content. You can't get deeper into 3D design um, applied to all aspects of, um, of, of really tech um, history. We're excited for them to do the medieval battle tech class, hacker calculus. Um, every teacher here is quite talented. Um, I'm going to keep looking over if anybody has a question on instructor specific. Um, Grayson Kent has been with us for some time. He is just sort of a bottomless source of knowledge for all things animal science. Um, I would love to go on and on about our individual teachers. Dow um, has a PhD and is bringing um, her uh, medical background into the classroom. She'll be doing organic chemistry as well as the um, pathology of its um, viruses. Um, so you'll see that much of many of our classes are, are really rooted in sort of today's world finding um, problem-based learning solutions um, um, through their content. Um, let's see, um, I think what we could do now, we've talked a little bit about our instructors and the curriculum and how we create it. Um, what, what we could do, I want to make sure that you know that um, we have a, um, a schedule and course description document. Um, that kind of provides an outline of the um, ages and course descriptions. I know that the online format is a little bit difficult on our website to be able to compare classes. So hopefully that um, chart will enable you to sort of look across uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes to Tuesday, Thursday and see what sounds like it would be the best fit for your child. Um, again, we're here for advisement on what you think um, would work best. Um, we're happy to share with you our experience and knowledge on um, both the instructors, the content, and what your child's um, interests are. Um, so moving on to the online format. Um, really, again, this is rooted in the mission of IEA. Um, we want to make sure that we're promoting the social emotional um, um, development um, we want to make sure that they're, they're being met intellectually, creatively, um, and just meeting their personal growth potential. So this will be a little bit of a broad description of the format for online, but basically these classes will be conducted live um, with some supplementation of um, activities that they may do between classes. Um, but we want to make sure that our instructors have a direct line to your child and that your children have a direct line to that community of learning. Um, so that will not be lost um, through, um, you know, just, um, you know, non-interactive um, instruction. So definitely these classes will be conducted live. Um, encouraging the social engagement, the skills practice, and then our courses do offer children the option to do a mastery project. 
questions that also often come up are, is there a lot of homework? Will my child be sort of swamped, you know, with, um, and, 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 you know, so many of our students, they want, they want to succeed, they want to do, and sometimes that can, can really um, get them stuck. So we're here to help them explore and feel good about their learning. Um, and so when it comes to assignments that, that they might do outside of that live instruction, that's tailored to, to the child. And, and our instructors want to encourage um, students to really go for it, but also understanding that there's, at any given point, children are learning something, and it may not be just, can you produce this thing? Um, it's the process often. So um, what I'd like to do now, and I really appreciate everyone's patience. This is my first webinar, so I'm excited to, to connect with, with people this way, um, is that um, we'd like to go, I, the best way really to talk about the format, format of the online classes as well is looking at some student work. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, and I'm going to pause just a moment. Um, yes, okay. So um, I'm just kind of toggling here with a couple of messages, but actually, Alexis, if you don't mind, can I jump in with a couple yeah. of uh, answers for some of these questions coming yes, through? Yeah, sure. Excellent. All right. So one of the questions that came through is asking how Academy fits into the overall IEA offering and how is the focus different from other programs? That's a great question. So IEA's programming are structured in a step sort of structure and it's designed around age versus grades. So Academy is the entry point for a lot of our families because we start so young, six years old, up through 14. And then we have another program called UNASA. UNASA is a summer camp. There's one camp in Michigan and one camp in Colorado. The Colorado is our UNASA West. This year it will be running virtually, digitally, which is a new foray for us and we're excited about that. Currently, we're still planning on holding the Michigan in person, um, but those plans are in the works right now. That is available from 10 to 15, 14, 15. And that is an, an immersive summer camp with gifted students to challenge them in areas where maybe they're not as comfortable. It's to support them uh, socially, to introduce them to other like-minded students, have them engage with professionals that are familiar with students who are gifted and, and highly talented. And really really develop them as well-rounded individuals and also complement where their giftedness shines. So it's about that equilibrium. Um, also with UNASA, we have um, a, a program called Labs. It's like Academy. It grew out of Academy. Nicole's in charge of it, so I'll let her speak to it directly. But that's for an, a larger, uh, an older audience. Like Academy, it's a deep dive with a professional, typically somebody who works within that field in a university or lab setting, um, and they give a very concentrated look at a particular topic, which again, Nicole can comment on later. And we also have our Carolyn D. Bradley Scholarship. This is a unique scholarship that is for seventh graders to apply to that goes into effect for high school. The scholarship is for four years of high school and there is a component to this um, where a student gets support through high school. So not only is it about having the financial um, availability to go to a, a well-suited high school, but also have a cohort of individuals, like-minded students, as well as professionals um, that help guide them to uh, the most successful high school opportunities, whatever that might look like. And that's across the country. That's a really a spectacular program that if you're interested in learning more about, you can, you can certainly reach out to us for that. Uh, right now it's closed for current seventh graders we just ended the um, application process in April so if you have a sixth grader that might be worth looking into for next year and then right now our virtual programming is really new to us but we're looking to take that labs experience and put that online we're looking to take our UNASA experience and put that online so this is all um, projects in the works that we're still sort of formalizing what that looks like exactly so that's that question Nicole feel free to jump in here if you'd like Otherwise, I'm gonna to go to the next question. Actually, Alexis, this might be a good one for you to answer. The question is, how will classes that require 3D printing, printing be handled in the digital space? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and so on this slide here with the student work, the center diagram right there, that is um, a 3D 
um, rendering um, in OpenSCAD. Um, with the 3D design, we really have some experts in the field working with these online um, with this online content. Um, as far as the, um, the, the coding, the, the platform that would be used, um, obviously that's something that um, is easily translatable through the online um, you know, practice. Um, as far as actually printing the 3D um, designs, that's something that we definitely can do. Um, we have, um, depending, you know, we're happy to also connect with families on what, what um, they may have at home that they want to use if they do have a 3D printer, but we will be printing, um, you know, uh, models um, that the instructors will be able to make sure that there's a physical product there from their, um, their uh, assignment. So this would be an example here, the Mars base done in the Fusion 360. Um, this one wasn't 3D printed, but it is modeling. Um, we have other um, courses that they can produce um, their 3D print, um, and we can print them here at our learning center and make sure that they get out to the families. Um, I'd like to continue um, also with one of the questions here. I'm seeing Amber, if that's okay. I saw the question about age range. Um, and, um, and the age ranges here are kind of, you know, a great example sort of of, um, you know, when we have the six to nine year old group, the 11 to the nine to uh, the 12 and the 12 to 14. Um, ages are, um, can be flexible. We want to just make sure that all aspects of that child's interest in the content are going to be met um, in the class. So um, if there is a child who is 12 and the content is really, and their experience and their readiness um, matches for um, um, an, you know, the older group, if they're 11, excuse me, and they're looking for the 12 to 14 age range, um, that is something that we'd be happy to, to explore and um, really try to make sure that we can work with the child's uh, needs. So we know that the curriculum is really built for, um, is, 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 you know, framed for that age group, but we can be flexible and work with some ages within um, within um, just through advisement to better understand if that is the right fit. So it is a customizable um, program so that we're able to, um, you know, just make sure that it's the right match. Um, speaking to that as well, um, we understand that um, if a child joins a class, if, it, if there are aspects of it that are not um, are not congruent with their needs, then we can continue to advise and find the right fit. Um, we definitely feel that we do have a class that will, um, you know, address the needs of the child. If, if in the first lesson it's evident that, um, that there could be other options, then we would love to explore that. We really do welcome and invite um, feedback on your child's experience. Um, with regard to um, the the student work here, that speaks back to the format of the online classes. Um, we're really not wanting to pigeonhole our instructors into a very specific uh, format that won't, won't work for online learning. So um, we are, you know, we'll, we'll be sharing a demo a little bit later with a platform that we'll be introducing. Um, but our goal is to have these classes um, you know, really up to their potential in the online format and always welcome the feedback from families um, as well as, you know, we've, we've also invited feedback um, from our community um, in the planning of these classes as well. Um, so here on the left, we have a student work from uh, the Harry Potter class. Um, and that class really did speak very much to the, um, the social engagement, uh, having students collaborate, discussion, um, and have student projects they could continue to work on. Um, the mastery project could be um, a written sample, a video, um, a construction project. Um, it's really um, customized to the students, you know, what they're, they're excited about. Um, and then again, here on the right, the untitled poem, um, that is from the, um, how to, how to Eat a Poem with uh, Lucy, who is going to be teaching um, the uh, Mythology of Many Lands class. Um, let's see. 
Alexis, there are two more questions that came through yeah. that I'd like to take the opportunity to answer now. Thank you. And the first one is, um, we have a family here who applied two days ago for the Academy Summer Classes, and they're curious about when they can get a response. They're really eager um, because they don't want to miss out on popular classes because of the limited capability or capacity. Right. Um, well, we are, um, it's, the applications that we receive, it doesn't take long for us to review, follow up if there are any questions. Typically, it takes a day to two days to respond. Um, and just making sure if there's any follow-up necessary, um, but we really do want to make sure that, um, and in addition, if you're interested in some classes you, and you're finding that maybe you're at a, at a stage of the application that you, you would like to at least know that you've expressed your child's interest in a course, you can also let us know that so we can make a, a mental note um, that your child is interested in a class. But the application process, once you've submitted it, typically takes um, about one to two days for us to respond, but we always welcome your follow-up to check in. Um, we're, Salesforce is a really exciting um, platform that we're working with, um, but we are a small team and troubleshooting as issues arise, um, but certainly we should be able to um, at least you know, you can reach out, let us know if there's a class your child is interested in. Oftentimes those phone calls or emails are the starting point to the, to the advisement um, that can make everything so much um, smoother for your child to figure out what the right fit is. And just to reiterate what you just said, um, it's a really customizable program, particularly for those of you new to IEA. It's really easy to reach out and have conversations with us and talk about what's going on with your unique situation and really just hear what, what might be the best fit given our previous experience and our recommendations. So don't be shy about reaching out, uh, whether it's about the application or any other questions you might have. And then Alexis, right now, I'd like to take a moment and just answer one more before we move on. And it's about the robotics. How, do, how are we planning on handling that virtually? Yeah, um, so for, I do have notes on that actually. <laughs> um, so for robotics, um, the idea is that it depends on the age. We have three different um, courses for robotics, the 6 to 9, the 9 to 12, and the 12 to 14. Um, our instructor, Richard, um, has been a team league um, leader and um, has a lot of experience with both those um, in-person teams and then over the spring working with um, classes online. Um, what we'll be doing is with all instructors, all classes that have that building component or um, sort of that, um, uh, you know, maybe a tutorial on a project and then coming back to see how it's going um, with the build, um, we'll be reaching out to families on specifics. So um, for the six to nine year old group, um, definitely the coding piece is going to be a big part of um, what they're learning um, with the possibility of a unit. Um, but we'd like to, um, as, as we reach out to families on, on their, um, on their um, interest and concerns for that online platform is to follow up with them. For, um, so definitely with the coding for the six to nine year olds in that, in that robotics with the possibility of a, a robotic unit um, as, and then for the older students, um, Coder Z is a program that will likely be used for the nine to 14 year old classes as well as the MakeBots. Um, so we're very excited to follow up with more details on those units um, and having them, uh, having student access to them. Um, we are um, gathering info and making sure that we get the right, um, the right materials so that your child can really engage um, with, the, with the content in meaningful ways. Great, thank you. So now that we understand a bit more about the courses that we're offering, I hope you've all had a chance to download the document that has the breakdowns of all the different courses we're offering. We have 29 in total across the three separate age groups. If you have questions about that, again, let us know. Um, we're about to transition into looking at the platform that we're gonna be using to present this content to students. Thank you so much. And I look forward to, to connecting with you guys. Thanks for joining.
Megan, I'll go ahead and let you take the screen over. Wonderful. Thank you, Amber and Alexis. Before I move on to kind of tour our virtual classroom, I do want to um, address a couple of questions that came in in the Q&A. So there's two questions here that say, what are the class sizes? What are our typical class sizes? When we are offering classes in person, we don't go more than 10 students in order to keep the classes small and intimate and really create that optimal learning space for everyone that's present. And we are continuing that same small class size online. So, um, which hopefully will also help support our teachers as they are trying to maintain high engagement with all of the students there. So you should be expecting your students to be participating in online classes with between five to 10 students total. Another great question that came in was, um, do we sign up for summer classes a la carte or are they designed to be attended the whole day? So we do offer classes in time blocks that could actually fit your entire, um, the, your child's entire day. It really just depends on you and the amount of screen time that you want them to be um, um, absorbing and, and intaking and what their capacity is to be engaged for that level. We do, when we offer our, our in-person classes, we do have online, or I'm sorry, all day classes and we have a handful of students that stay for an entire day. Um, and we have built in breaks and um, brain breaks and, and, and actual lunch breaks and things like that. Online, it's a little bit different. And so you really have the ability to design what you want for your student and what you think is gonna be best for them um, in this new space. Okay, so um, like Amber was saying, I'm gonna be sharing um, what our online platform is gonna look like. So let's take a look. So we are going to be using the online platform called Moodle. This is what your students are going to see when they get logged in to their online classroom. So um, as students are getting um, enrolled into classes, we will be creating an online user uh, profile for them, most likely using your email address or whatever preferred email address you provide us with in order for your students to access them. Once, they've, once we've created that online um, profile for them, we will enroll them in the courses and this is what their dashboard is going to look like. You can see this test student is enrolled in two classes for the summer, the Harry Potter behind the words and it's electrifying, fueling the future. So their dashboard is really simple. They can see all of the classes that they're enrolled in. It's really nicely organized. Over on the right panel, you can see what are some of the um, upcoming um, activities that their teachers have put on the calendar. It might be an upcoming live class or an um, asynchronous activity that the teachers want them to do before class. And so it all shows up on that um, dashboard for your students to easily see and organize um, what, their, what their academy classrooms look like. So once they go into a class, you can see that here the teachers will be providing you with lots of different ways for students to engage. We did a poll, a poll with our IA community across program to find out what are some of the basic needs and um, high priorities of online and distant learning. And hands down, parents and families really said that their preference is um, live classes and getting students to engage not only with their teacher but with one another. And so while um, this online platform allows for students to engage with their teacher and other students in a number of different ways, primarily we are going to be using um, the live class feature, which you can see here is this big blue button. So once your students know that they've got their classes um, scheduled and they're logging in to go and jump into that classroom, this is what their online system looks like. So it's very similar to Zoom. Um, it has all of the same accesses um, and um, permissions that Zoom has. And so teachers will be 
able to um, control the um, students, whether they have the access to video, they'll be able to mute them, have um, polling, raising hands, screen sharing, chats, all of those pieces. You can kind of see here, all of those elements that we've come to really love and appreciate about Zoom are all available here on this platform as well. One of the questions that came in the chat had to do with um, training and support that teachers are given to best manage a classroom online. Um, and part of that was, you know, that we have some fantastic teachers, not only in academy, but in the field of education and that doesn't always translate online. Um, and so what we really have the benefit of um, what, what, what is one of our benefits in Academy is not only um, are we working with our teachers really closely um, to train them and make sure that they're using some of these tools to keep engagement high, to make sure that there's low distraction in the classroom through muting, through creating some norms and walking through that with their students. But we also have some professional um, professionals and really experienced teachers who teach online all all the time that's their primary way of teaching and um, what's wonderful is they not only are using their skills to enhance the students experience in their own classrooms they've also offered up their expertise to help support and train all of our teachers so um, we are while this is a new arena for us at academy um, and in IEA it's an area where we feel like we have a lot of resources and a lot of support to make it a really positive and strong um, learning experience for students while while we um, only have the ability to learn virtually so this is it this is our, our online platform it's very simple easy to use and my favorite feature like i already mentioned is that once your student is enrolled and they've been given access to the platform they can see all of their classes in one place they don't have to jump around from different different spaces or use specific codes to get into um, their zoom meetings it's all here it's all organized for them and really easy to access um, I'd love to answer any questions that may have come up about the online, um, the online classes. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can see what are some of the questions that have come in. Um, I see here one of our questions is, um, and actually this question is, is um, probably better suited for, um, for Alexis as our content specialist on, on our webinar today. Um, the question is, Alexis, um, can you share a little bit more about the Pillars of Architecture class? Um, yeah, so the Pillars of Architecture class is taught by Cynthia Moult. And um, as, you, as Megan, you were talking about um, the uh, instructors and what their background is. Um, Cynthia Moult has a real extensive background in gifted learning. Um, she is very much, um, um, her, her instinct is problem-based learning. So every course that she's teaching is going to be really looking at how do you dig into, um, you know, the con the, how do you dig into the concept, look at it from many sides, collaborate together, explore the issues, understand where, where those issues are coming from. Um, and so with the Pillars of Architecture class, this is a course that is going to really um, um, go into sort of the, the, the purpose of the design, um, the historical context for um, the building of, of, of um, architecture, and to then really bring it into the world, into, today, today, into today's world, and problem solve what is it why do we have architecture? Um, so for instance, um, a possible application of that might be um, relevant to today, what might a, a um, learning space, what might a post office, what might a um, community center be look like with, um, with keeping in mind maybe where we're moving forward post COVID um, isolation? Um, will restaurants potentially look a little different? Um, you know, is this something that students actually believe may impact 
architecture moving forward. So the pillars of architecture class is, architecture class is really going to draw from the past, look to the, the, the present um, you know, issues, uh, resources, and then imagine where we might take it. Um, and I think that that's pretty representative of, of Cynthia's style for um, the content that she teaches. Cynthia also teaches the sustainable product design course. Um, it's electrifying, which is the, um, the NAGC award-winning Sheila Gallagher curriculum. Um, she's also teaching a younger class cells um, under the microscope. But I would say um, just a, a holistic dive into the, um, the topic and, and really, really interested in the gifted experience and mindset of that content. Um, so she's really willing to go there with the students and um, also to speak to Megan, um, you know, talking about the curriculum and, and teacher um, um, readiness for meeting the challenge of online learning. I would say, um, you know, that um, we, we do have trainings each uh, session and we really go back to that idea of uh, who is a gifted student and it's a myriad of things. Um, and so we can safely say that all of our instructors are very in tune with um, listening to what it is that a child is needing um, on that day and in that moment. Um, so that's a little bit about the pillars of architecture. Um, I'm happy to answer other questions. I think I saw one about the advanced DND. Um, it's the part two of the same question. So if you want to speak to that a little bit, that'd be great. I think I will, but I would love anybody else that you know would like to chime in too. Um, so I just can't say, I really can't say enough about, uh, about our instructors. I would say that Grayson Kent, he is a veteran instructor with us. I don't know how long has he been, maybe five, six years, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can't, you know, I think that he is so connected to um, students um, finding their, um, how can I say this? I think, you know, through the journey of D&D, &D, advanced D&D, &D, um, you know, he's wanting to take, he's basically built, he started with a D&D &D introductory type class move from that to say, oh, these, these students are really ready for and need this next level. And now this advanced D&D class is, is sprung from that. So I would say, while I, I Nicole, maybe you can also speak to this as a, as a you've done some D&D playing, but I would say that the course has really evolved from the journey that the students have been taking and they, you know, they can, um, yeah, so I, I would say it's really built from that evolution of the, the original D&D classes. Yeah, one thing to add is um, the reason it's noted as an advanced class is, is that Grayson feels that uh, because this will be a virtual session and it's a little bit tricky to start from ground, from um, square one with learning D&D &D in that virtual setting, you can't like, you know, point to the correct die or um, really work on the sheet together, that, that this is supposed to be for students who have at least have some familiarity with the game already uh, but we can always work with more particular questions if you're not sure if that uh, applies to you. Nicole while we have you here can you address two other questions for us? Sure. We have a question here asking how much um, what is the price per course and what does tuition cover for the summer? Yeah so uh, courses are 225 and that uh, includes 12 and a half hours of live instruction, plus, depending on the class, some outside uh, asynchronous learning. So uh, every class, whether it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, the times add up to 12 and a half hours of live class time, and uh, that comes to 225. And then we do have multiple class discounts, sibling discounts, uh, and there's another one. Oh, early bird discount, which has passed. Um, that will uh, take some amounts off of that. And then that tuition covers, um, like I said, the live class time and the asynchronous um, activities that I provided. If there are additional materials, we will, uh, that really depends on the class and we'll reach out individually once we have all the details nailed down for that specific class based on the number of students and their interest. 
Okay. And just for everybody out there watching, that platform that we um, showed you earlier would be included with that. So there's no additional cost for platform access. We have another question here. Uh, if a student has to miss a class, will it be recorded so they can review it later and see what they missed? Alexis, maybe you can help answer what we might do for missed classes. Yeah, I would say um, for the, we definitely can record um, tutorials that instructors will provide. Um, over the spring, we refrained from recording um, student, you know, classes with student engagement just for privacy of student, um, um, you know, in the, in the class. I would say that um, certainly content wise, your child will, should be able to um, access what was covered. Um, as well as the Moodle does provide space for in that chatter and engagement with students that they can come back to and make sure that they participate in. Um, so yes, there, there, and there could be some pre-recorded tutorials for students as well, but we do care about making sure that students don't, um, don't um, lose out. But again, the format is live. And so um, the, 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 course material is really going to be covered primarily through those live live um, um, broadcasts or the sessions. Thank you for addressing that. We have another question here asking who's teaching Spotlight on Innovation? That one is also Cynthia Malt, correct? Yeah, that one is Cynthia who Alexis talked about as also teaching um, the really problem-based learning classes. So she'll be diving into what, what is innovation and, and some real pioneers of that. And then the students will have a chance to really take that on themselves. And she's so hands-on and really interdisciplinary with um, really melding that history piece with the science and the sort of just metacognition almost of <laughs> what does it mean to be a good learner and a good student. Excellent. Another question here, um, would the class on Socrates be available or be relatable to a younger student, 11 years old, who's a deep thinker? Yes, I would, I would really love to, to answer that. Um, and I, am, I, am, I have a human moment here <laughs> as we're live. Um, may I, can you answer a quick, another question real briefly? I'll be right back in. Yeah, in, absolutely. In just a second, this again is a human moment, but just give me one moment. Absolutely. I don't mind answering that one either. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so uh, the Socrates class, correct? I, I think that that would be just fine for an 11 year old student. As Alexis said earlier, our age ranges can be flexible, you know, not four years flexible, but they can be a, a, within a year flexible. And especially if, if this is a passion of your child, I really think that they're especially flexible in areas where you're just following the passion of what your student's interested in and what they want to learn. So I think wanting to get into the topic and really being a deep thinker will can cover any, you know, that one year of difference can, it can really make up for that. Um, so if there are specific, um, if you have more specific questions about that and if uh, you wanna reach out to us for us to connect with the instructor for, you know, maybe if there are topics that you're, uh, wondering if they'll be covered. We can definitely do that, but generally I would say they're a deep thinker and they're interested in philosophy. That one year is flexible. Yeah, and I would also like to um, to mention, and I, I think the course description is is um, true to the content in that the, the concepts are going to be really through the lens of um, not, not children's books in, you know, children's books in a, in a sophisticated way. So you talk about the giving tree, you know, you talk about, um, you know, books that really do introduce uh, big, big ideas and ways of, of thinking about them. So I would say definitely um, a, in total agreement with Nicole there and that the entry point into it is uh, into those philosophical um, ideas will be accessible. Um, and again, it's kind of like anything else you can go as deep and wide as you can as the students are are ready to, but through um, a very accessible um, format. Excellent. Yeah, I think that, sorry, one last thought is I think uh, what you said just now about how it, we move, the teachers will move forward as the students are ready. I think that's true for all of our classes. So a lot of 
the questions we've been getting about is about, uh, especially in this chat, is about um, if a class is right for a student, certain child, and that is something that we really like to work on a lot ahead of time. But also within the class, the teachers are all so adaptable, and you know we really want to make sure we get the right fit. But within a course, the teachers, although they have set curriculum, they're really looking to follow the interests of the students and and their um, skill sets and their interests and their passions. So, you know, if there's something a little bit missing, and especially if that's true in all of the students and there's a passion there that's in all the students, the teacher will happily pivot and dive into that. Excellent. We're at the top of the hour. I just got one last question in that I'd love to answer live. But before we do that, I just want to point out our email address here on the screen, academy at educationaladvancement.org. That goes to the academy team at large. Please feel free to reach out to us with any detailed questions that you have. We're happy to answer them. Um, if you have any problems with the application, again, reach out to us. We're happy to troubleshoot as well. Uh, the videos are there for support in addition to that. And then the last question I have here, what are the math prerequisites for the organic chemistry and hacker calculus class? You know this off the top of your heads, so I'll be impressed. <laughs> Well, I know that for the hacker calculus class, the, um, the, that is a very, very common question. Uh, families are wanting to know if they already need to ha have had calculus um, or pre-calculus. Um, and I think that, again, like our, um, we, we definitely, the, the, the class sizes are small enough that, and, and this, the instructors are able to diversify their teaching well enough that I know that this class, um, a couple of sessions ago when it ran, um, we did have um, an algebra, uh, a student with algebra um, knowledge that was able to um, really connect to the material and stay with the course and, and get introduced to those big concepts that continue to excite them about the math. Um, and so I think that um, there certainly are uh, like, like um, courses that the prerequisites are typically not really, really hard prerequisites, but we do want to make sure that we connect with the family and loop it back to the teacher to see, does this seem like this would be a good fit? There's quite a lot of, of communication between families, us, and teachers to figure out, does this seem like a good fit? Because maybe the child doesn't have, um, you know, um, real comfort necessarily in in that advanced math piece, but has a lot of experience and excitement maybe in that 3D element. So I do think that um, there, can be, um, there can be some um, prerequisites that are a little bit more stringent as far as skill uh, base, especially maybe if it's a part two course, but we're happy to talk with families about their questions on prerequisites. Um, typically prerequisites are suggested um, if the student is interested in that class, there's a reason for it. And maybe there's some aspect of it that needs a little bit of extra support. But I would say if they're really interested, um, that's what we're here for is to try to really tap into that excitement, um, you know, and make sure that it is workable for the student and the, the learning community in that class. Great, thank you for answering that question. Thank you Academy team for being here today and for answering questions. Thank you to everyone who joined us, both new and returning, near and far. We're really excited about this new uh, offering that we're able to do and really looking forward 